Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about how to make leather effects. I actually bought this package off of Creative Market. Her leather textures came with this bonus content where she had some leather tooling already started. This is something I know how to do, but it was kind of nice to have a starting point that I could tweak. And some of you might not know how to use this, so I wanted to show you how. I wanted to make little leather tabs to use in her family album. So you can see how this is J for January. So on each page of her family album, I have the books divided up. I will have these leather tabs for sale in my Etsy shop if you'd like to purchase them. But if you want to make your own and do your own leather effects, this is how you can do it and I will link on my blog I will link this package because I really like the leather that she did just so you know if you see tutorials on how to make leather in Photoshop there are ways of doing it to di digitally make leather but leather one of the reasons it looks so cool is it has different texture and different roughed up edges she actually scanned in pieces of leather to make this so it has a lot more interest it was worth it for me to spend the six dollars to buy her leather if leather scan leather pieces and try to spend the time finding and scanning things myself so i did purchase these from creative market i'm going to go ahead and show you how i started with this i'm going to go ahead and do a tab so show you how i made that I'm gonna go ahead and make a new photoshop document to start you could also do something like make a full page you need to decide how big it's going to be i'm going to make this three inches by six inches because that's a good size for my particular project. Notice there's this little artboards thing, unless you know what that is, don't click on it or you'll have a weird thing show up. So here is my file that I have open. So just like a long skinny file. And what I wanna do now, I'm hitting Command minus to zoom out a little bit. I wanna take a shape. So I'm gonna make sure this is set to black right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my rectangle tool. Right now it's on a custom shape, but I'm gonna take a rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. I'm gonna start with this rectangle and I'm gonna turn this into this bookmark shape. This is actually an illustrator tool. If you go over here, there's this pen tool. I'm gonna to do this add anchor point. If you're not familiar with vector art or illustrator, you're gonna be pretty confused. I'm gonna go ahead and add a point here and then I wanna make sure that I am on the paths selection tool here so that I can take this and bring it up. For those of you who aren't familiar with Illustrator, and by the way, this would be much easier to do in Illustrator, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that over and make, make my shapes. I just brought this little divot up in the center. I normally, if I was an Illustrator, I could take some time to make sure that's perfectly centered. Like I said, it's easier to do in Illustrator, but that is what this little thing is here. It's just a path tool. They put that in Photoshop just because sometimes you just wanna do a little tweaking of a path and it's easier than opening up Illustrator. I'll have this shape for you to download saved as a PNG file. What I mean by that is the background will be transparent, which is gonna be important as you do your bookmark. Now that I have my bookmark shape, I wanna go ahead and open up my piece of leather. So I'm gonna go ahead from my desktop and I'm gonna pick one of her textures. I used the, so she has a bunch of different textures. You can see how she just scanned in existing leather. And I really liked this weather, the weathered medium brown. And had an open, so I've got this open now. And I'm gonna go Command A, which is select all, Command C, which is copy, and Command V, which is paste. And now you can see how my leather texture is in my file. I'm gonna go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. I normally use the shortcut key, Alt, Command, G, and then it creates a clipping mask. What that clipping mask does is it's taking this leather texture and clipping it, like it, almost like stamping it out, if you will. It's clipping it so this leather only shows where the pixels below it are. I use clipping masks a lot in Photoshop, and they are, they're fun to use. I have another video tutorial that explains clipping masks if you wanna check out, look through my channel. I'm just resizing this a little bit. One thing I should note is I'm holding the shift key as I do this. The other thing you could do is hold this little lock icon. What that does is it keeps your leather from distorting, meaning you don't want it to get squished horizontally or vertically. So it's important to, they call it constrain the proportions or maintain aspect ratio. It's important to either do this. I tend to just hold the shift key because it's faster. Now I have my leather in place and now I want to start adding my text. So I'm going to take my text tool and I will tell you, if you go over to this, this, this font right here, so this is my J, 
This is that, you can see the font right here, Academy Engraved. So I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna take my type tool and I'm gonna click J and I wanna make sure it's Academy Engraved. Now what you'll notice is it picked that font already and it also picked brown. The reason it did that is because the last thing I worked on in Photoshop was this right here. So it's just showing because it's the last thing I did. Photoshop always remembers the last thing you did. If you're wondering why on earth I made this brown, because it probably looks ridiculous to you, it's because it'll look better for the, the effect of making it leather tooled. It will look better if you have it the color of the leather. I'm gonna go ahead and pick black, just so you can see and then see how I changed this. I'm gonna hit Command, T. You'll notice I picked the move tool and then hit command T. I'm going to once again hold that shift key because I don't want that to happen. That's what I meant by distorting. So I'm just going to shift and make this bigger and hit, eh, that might be a little too big, hit the check button. And then to make this the color of the leather, you have your little eyedropper tool, which is right here. And I'm going to just pick the leather color hit my text tool again, or you can hit T, select this, and click on that brown, hit OK. And then once again, too, you have to also say check. Yes, I want it to do that. So now once this color of my font matches my leather, now I can go ahead and copy some layer styles. So you can look right here. I want to copy the style of this bonus content where it looks like it's been punched into the leather. Right here, you can see how it says bonus content and see how there's that little FX icon on the right. If I click this little arrow, you can see these options, these effects that have been added. By the way, you add these by clicking on this little effects icon here. You can see bevel and boss, stroke, blah, 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 all of these different things that you can play with. What I wanna do is right click and I can hit copy layer style. It's nice that she has this, that's why it's that bonus content because you can copy and paste it. I'm gonna go ahead and right click. And by the way, make sure you're right clicking on here. If you're on a mouse or if you're on a Mac and you don't have a, a mouse that you can right click on, you can just control click instead of right click. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hit paste layer style. And then you can see how this is starting to look embossed. I don't really like how this looks. You have to remember that you've got different sizes of fonts and you've got all sorts of different things going on. So this is a starting point. I'm gonna go ahead and select the bevel and emboss. I'm gonna soften this edge a little bit. That's that edge right here. Right now it's on up. I wanna do down. So I changed it to down because I think that looks better. So see how just up versus down. So I've got down selected. I'm just playing with this slider until I like it. And then this opacity for your highlight, what they're doing is they're putting a light edge here and a shadow there to give it that 3D effect. So you can make your, your highlight brighter or less bright. Increasing or decreasing the opacity. It's very subtle. Make sure you have preview selected so you can see it change on this. And then you can see how the shadow can shift too. I like it right about there. This, how much you want this bevel with embossed is going to depend on how thick and how big your shape is. Because if you're leather tooling and you stamp like a really big, deep shape, that's obviously gonna have a bigger size and more of a shadow to it, because it's more, it has a greater indentation. I'm happy with the bevel and embossed, and I'm now gonna go play with a color overlay. So you can see how she's just kind of got like a subtle color that she's adding to this. Now, I think that's a little reddish looking, so I'm double clicking on my icon, and then you can see how that changes color here. So I took this from a reddish and made it to more of a warm brown, more of a gray brown, I should say. Now I have my color overlay changed on my layer. You can see how if I undo the bevel and embosh, you can see how each of these affects this technique here. Now that I have that done, I wanna go ahead, I've work, been working on this for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I, when I'm doing a family album, so here's my 2018 folder, you can see how I have a folder called Illustrations, and I saved leather tabs in here. This is my second version I'm making for you, so I'm gonna save this to the desktop. Hit save. Saving it as a Photoshop file because I want those layers. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my text 
I'm going to type January because that's the next thing I want to do. If you look at my content here, I have this January here. Now I actually used on mine, I used a font called Proxima Nova. That is a paid font that you probably don't own. I'm going to go ahead and pick a different font. This one is Avenir. The key is that this font is kind of a thin font. I'm going to go ahead and play with this. I think 30 is a nice size. I'm going to go ahead and take my move tool and shift this. One thing that's kind of cool is you shift, you can see when it's centered. You can also, if you hold the shift key, you can click on two layers and you can click this and center it that way. Now that I have this January text here, I want to go ahead and start with this effect that I added and paste it up here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy the layer style and then I'm going to paste it to this text here. You can see how this looks funny. It's because this is a really thin font and so I don't want it to be quite as deep as what this was. First, I'm going to take the size and drop it down just a tiny bit. You can see how I can change the depth here. And I'm just doing this visually. I'm just looking at it and deciding. I'm gonna look at my highlights. I think I'm gonna bring the highlights up. And I think the shadows are probably good where they are. Gonna, okay. Now, instead of okay, I could also jump right to my color overlay and play with this. I can lighten that up by dropping down the opacity or I can pick a different color. So you can see this subtly change as I shift the overlay that I select. And I'm going to leave that the same. And then now you have this gradient overlay, and I'm going to drop this down. One thing I should actually show you on the gradient overlay, these colors, if you double click on this, this is where you can change these colors for this. So this is where you can change those options. Now I have my J and I have my January and I want to go ahead now and play with this little thing here. I'm going to merge these together. So I'm picking both layers and I'm hitting Command E, just making that one shape. Now I want to go ahead and I want to add a, an effect to it because this bookmark should look 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and add a bevel and emboss to it. I want this to be an inner bevel. I can play with the depth. You can see how you can do up or down. I did up because the bookmark is beveling up from the page. I want it to look 3D. I can play with the size a little bit. So basically the higher the size, the thicker your leather is going to look. You can soften the edge so you can round the shape of the leather. So making it harder or softer. And then the shadow is really dark. So I can take this and drop it down and make it not as extreme just playing with these sliders back and forth. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Once you have this file here, you wanna turn this into a PNG to use for your books. So you wanna to go to file, save as, and I wanna call this January tab. And I wanna make sure I pick, there we go, PNG. All right, save that to my desktop, hit okay. And I'm going to go ahead and show you my finished ones. So you can see how in my photo album that I made, and these are the ones that you'll find on my, on my Etsy site, but here's my tab. So here's April, here's August, December, February, January, March, all these different months. So I saved each one individually. To save or to change these, it's really simple. Once you do your January one, all you have to do is type in an F for February, and then change your font down here to February. Some other things I should point out, I showed you how you could select both of these and center them. You can also select your bookmark shape and do the same thing. You need to be on the move tool. With the move tool selected and all three of these layers selected, I just held shift to select all three. You can hit this centered and it will make sure this is perfectly centered for you. I will tell you that sometimes you need to tweak it because even when something is centered, there's a lot on this side of the letter. So sometimes even if it's perfectly centered, it might look visually better, just slightly off centered. It just, it depends on your preference, but just something to keep in mind. Now that I put the F and the February in, now I could go to file, save as, and I could name this February. 
I'll have this little bookmark shape for you, a nice, neat, cleaned up version on my blog that you can download. It's just a simple PNG file. Do know there's also some options here for custom shapes. So for example, if you wanted to add a snowflake to your document, once you have your shape here, you could apply one of the other tooling effects as well. So if you wanted this tooling that sticks out versus going in, you can go ahead and you can copy the layer style. I just, I know it's that ornament because you can hide it. I can check and make sure that's the one I wanted. And then I can right click. Once you paste that layer style, you can do the same thing like you did before. You can open this up and play with the effects and soften some of these things, but you can see how now you have this shape that you can apply. So here's my January. So if you wanted, you could have a snowflake. And just like before, if you Command T, Command T or Control T is a shortcut, but it's also free transform under edit is where you can find that. I wanna make sure I either hit this lock icon or hold the shift key so that the proportions are constrained. I can hit the little check and now I can move my snowflake around so it looks better, a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to add a little icon to your leather tooling, you can do that as well. This can be applied in a lot of ways I used it to make little leather tabs. I'll go ahead and open up my family album so you can see how that looks. I'll go ahead and open up this 2018 pages. And so you can here you can see it in February. And then here it is at the beginning of January. Most of you probably aren't using InDesign. I'll make put this in presentation mode so you can see. But if you were doing this in Photoshop, you could easily what I do is I'll make like a photo, when I used to use Photoshop for my family albums, I'd make a page in Photoshop and then you can just simply place this PNG file. I wanna show you a few extra things with this bonus content. You'll notice she has some grommets and stitches. So here she has the stitches right here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So this little section of stitches here, I can go ahead and I can, so this is, I can tell which one it is because I hit it and you can see how it showed up there. I can go ahead and I can go to duplicate layer and I can put this in my, oh, I don't know which leather tabs it is because I call them both the same thing. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead, it looks like it put it in here. So here's my leather tabs. I'm gonna hit that command or control T and I can resize this. I think those stitches are a little too big. So I'm making them a little bit smaller. And I can go ahead and click check to place them in. And then what I can do from here, that's kind of cool, is if I take these stitches and I drag it down to just above my leather, if I do that same layer, create clipping mask, you'll notice how it clips the stitches. They can't go beyond this leather tab here. So that's another fun technique. If you want to do something different with these leather effects, now you know how you can actually use this as a starting point and play with these grommets and play with these stitches and add some of these effects to your own shapes and text. Enjoy and have fun creating.